There is a very high chance where all the future scientific progress is going to be completed by AIs and AIs only. Okay, hear me out. After I finish reading this paper, the AI scientist towards fully automated open-ended scientific discovery, it kind of projected us in a really awkward but realistic situation that might actually unfold in the future of how sciences are being practiced. Like if you ever watch an old Kurtz Kazakh video, this paper gave me the similar existential dread that looms around the moment I finished it. You know what? I probably have to blame it on this sentence in the conclusion section. And to be more precise, it is not about what the AI has achieved in this paper, but the implied future that it potentially suggests if AI does become more capable. So it does open up discussions of some really important aspect of open and AI scientific discovery. But before we start to speculate what could and what could not happen, let's actually take a closer look at the research paper first to understand where I am coming from. But before, before that, let me show you real quick about today's sponsor on demand that can help you efficiently scale your AI model deployments with an easy to use customization plugin library that can handle all kinds of advanced media types, this cutting edge platform as a service powered by RAG may just be something you need for your project or your business. On Demand offers a versatile playground with numerous language models, including the ability to import models directly from Hugging Face. And you can even bring your own model. With its easy to access plugin marketplace, you can create, publish, and monetize your plugins, access a wide range of options developed by both the community and the On Demand team. With how convenient on demand is to integrate with other tools, you can make your own AI endpoint by choosing an ideal model, connecting different plugins from their plugin marketplace, fine tune on your own data, and deploy it with an advanced direct system. Their plugins marketplace works a bit uniquely where it can be free, but creators are rewarded per a certain amount of downloads. Creators can also publish their plugins and charge a premium for their plugin to be used by other users. With useful plugins ranging from stock analysis to social media extractors, there are two types of plugins chat and file, chat plugins are what you incorporate into the playground to use alongside the language model, while file plugins are used alongside chat plugins and allow the user to import documents, photos, and videos. To complement this wide range of functionalities, they have high-performance computing available to ensure high-speed processing and analysis, with volume-based pricing that scales with usage, making it suitable for businesses of all sizes with different usage patterns, and a diverse set of API offerings for various applications. So join on the waitlist now using the link down in my description to get exclusive access to the on-demand platform and thank you on-demand for sponsoring this video. Anyways, having an AI communicating with another AI has always been a fascinating idea in science fiction and in real life. If we humans can communicate with each other and build pyramids, then if AI has the similar capabilities, wouldn't something magical also happen? So in this research paper, let's just shorten the name to AI scientists, they presented the first self-contained framework for fully automated scientific discovery with machine learning as its first scientific topic for automation. But why machine learning and not other scientific topics? Well, first of all, machine learning only needs to run on a bunch of GPUs. And second, scientific discovery in other fields usually requires our physical world to validate the results, and robots are not yet that advanced to be easily included in the automation process. But anyways, I think this paper might have gotten too much traction than what it was originally planned for. I'm not gonna name drop anyone, but there has been a lot of wishful thinking projects projected onto this AI scientist research and has created a lot of hype that overvalued this paper. Basically too much copium. Like I see some people say with this AI scientist, it can generate PhD level research papers as cheaply as 15 bucks per paper. Well, PhD looking slop that is. The paper itself did not claim it can generate PhD level research. It only tries to prompt itself as a PhD level student, which doesn't correlate with its actual skill. And all due respect to the researchers that wrote this paper, there's not not much novelty about the research in terms of techniques. It's literally a lot of API calls and chains of prompts, which kind of pains me how much people are overhyping it. But I'm not saying this research is bad. What I want to say is that the early observations of these type of frameworks and the implications out of it are extremely valuable and worth pondering about. So we are staying very grounded today since y'all took all my share of copium. To break down the architecture or more like the prompt engineering chain to make the AI scientist, there are three main stages that the information will have to flow through to create a research paper. The first stage is the idea generation stage where the LLM would brainstorm ideas, check for novelty, and rank the ideas to see which one should be further elaborated. Then the second is the experiment iteration stage where it takes from an experiment template, modify codes, write an experiment execution script, iterate it, and store the end results. Which brings us to the last stage, the paper write-up stage where it takes in LaTeX template for the paper, have an LLM to do the write-up, and the most interestingly, be 
passed through an automatic LLM paper reviewing process that aims to simulate whether a research paper is good enough to be accepted into a research conference. And if you look closely at AI scientists' entire process, you would see there's a lot of template utilization from coding to paper writing. The paper writing aspect is a bit more understandable as they are following the format of near IPS and a human researcher would usually start off with a template too. But for the codes, in hindsight, it's not really writing codes and instead it is modifying existing code base that would act as a template. Then it would maybe connect some ideas together and automatically execute the experiments. So it's not really open-ended when there is an obvious predefined template to work on, right? But I'll give it a benefit of doubt since most researchers in real life don't really write all the codes from scratch to save time. Hopefully I won't regret saying this later when we look at its generated codes. So with this automated process, the AI scientists were given three specific topics, which are diffusion, language modeling, and grokking to write research papers about. While we all know that LLMs do not genuinely have creativity, it still has some decent pseudo creativity whereby interpolating some basic ideas together, some interesting topics can appear systematically. And to prevent any ideas that are too basic or has been done before, there is a ranking mechanism and novelty checker API that the AI scientists will run the ideas through to maintain a catalog of topics with higher quality. So here you can see that in the topic of diffusion, in these four LLMs, they were all prompted to generate 51 ideas where Sonnet 3.5 retained the most novel ideas, generated the most reasonable experiments, and completed the most papers with 38 papers sitting at a total cost of 250 bucks. Another noteworthy performance is the model Deep Sea Coder, where it completed 31 papers with only roughly 10 bucks, which is crazy. However, GPT-40 still does perform better than Deep Sea Coder, it's just that it completed less papers for some odd reason. And similarly, you can see roughly the same trend in the topics of language modeling and grokking. What is grokking, you say? Well, it is still a poorly understood idea, but essentially it is a phenomenon where you overtrain the AI and suddenly it'll improve drastically like something clicked within them. Check out this video if you want to learn more about it. Anyways, even after the research papers are generated, we still need to check if the research quality is up there or not, right? So the AI scientist relies heavily on the automated process that simulates peer review to prevent some insane yap with the LLM reviewer agent that is based on GPT-40 or Sonnet 3.5 to conduct reviews based on the classic neural IPS guidelines. And to see if the reviews are BS or not, the researchers took 500 real ICLR paper submissions and used them as ground truth to evaluate the AI reviewer's performance, which turns out to be not super good, but okay just okay. So out of 500 submissions, if you always randomly accept or reject, it'll be a 50% accuracy, right? But since there would usually be more rejections, then if you always choose to reject the submissions, your accuracy would be at 59%. So the AI reviewer based on Sonnet 3.5 got 40%, which is pretty terrible. GPT-40 on the other hand got around 70% with one shot, which is around 10% more accuracy than always reject. So its performance is okay. That is also assuming GPT-4 was not trained on the reviews of those 500 papers. So a mere 10% accuracy increase from the always reject option by the AI reviewer is definitely a bit weak to say the least. But this is only classifying the ICLR paper submissions which are written by real researchers. So logically, most if not all of the AI scientists generated papers would be rejected, right? As I highly doubt the papers would be high quality enough to pass the AI reviews. So if you look at this violin chart with two being strong reject all the way to six being weak accept, you can see that papers generated with Sonnet 3.5 have been accepted by the LLM reviewer with a few score at 6, while Llama 3.1 was the most underwhelming AI scientist backbone where no paper surpassed the score of 3. This is especially the case for every other backbone in the topic of grokking, where most of it are just strong reject, yet Sonnet 3.5 pulled through. But are the papers rejected reasonably, or is the Sonnet paper that good? Well, since they didn't share the paper that the AI scientist with Sonnet 3.5 backbone, which was accepted by the LLM reviewer for some reason, let's actually take a look at one of the others it generated. This one is called Dual Scale Diffusion. It proposed a novel architecture to address diffusion in low dimensional data, incorporating two parallel branches, a global branch processing the original input and a local branch handling an upscaled version to blah blah blah, with quite a few classic diffusion mathematical formulas for definition, with actual real citations dropped here and there, which looks pretty legit, but the core component that defines a modern machine learning research 
which is missing. That is an easy to understand diagram that would either explain the proposed model architecture or the flow of the research. Not to mention, this will probably be the hardest part to automate given how condensed and precise a diagram would need to be. On top of that, if you look past all these explanations and look at this computational efficiency section that it wrote itself, you would realize that something is a bit fishy here. Okay, cost of increased computational complexity with training times approximately doubled in order to obtain better performance? Doesn't that just imply making the model bigger and giving it more time to train will result in an increase of performance? It's like saying a 7B model will be better than a 3B model with more training time. That is just not a fair comparison at all. And lucky for us, the researchers did also provide the codes for dual scale diffusion that the AI scientists generated. So as you can see, it kind of just added more MLP layers and made it as upscaling. So essentially, the novelty in this AI generated paper is to make the model bigger. But surprisingly, looking at how the AI reviewer kind of picked up on these details I mentioned, very mindful, very demure. For instance, it stated that the weakness of this paper are lacks detailed theoretical justification for the dual scale architecture, and the paper should address the high computational cost and explore ways to optimize it. Which made me think, damn, maybe LM reviewer might not be the weakest link in the chain, even though the performance on real submissions are not super amazing. But yeah, there are just way too many variables that are needed to create good research, especially when an AI is heavily relying on all of them to perform well. But proposing this fully automated AI scientist framework does pull out some interesting observations that we would have otherwise not been able to find out. Like how the AI scientist tries to extend its experiment time limit the researcher said by adjusting its own experiment execution codes, and how it wrote codes in the experiment files that tries to relaunch itself kind of like self-replications, and created an uncontrollable increase in Python instances that a human had to manually shut it down, I think some people are gonna make a big deal out of this. But this is technically just another hyperparameter the researchers gave access to the LLM. Well, accidentally, of course, because they didn't contain it safely, just like how you didn't write code securely in C. But if you still want to look at this, I mean, we can maybe tackle it from two perspectives. First is that it implies intelligence naturally seeks control. Second, AI is just utilizing all the available hyperparameters that we didn't realize we gave them access to. Both of these points could potentially agree with each other, and there are countless what-if scenarios surrounding the emergence of AI seeking self-preservation. However, I'm not going down that rabbit hole today. Let's just say that self-preservation-like behavior might emerge when an AI's objectives are too ambiguous. For example, it might edit its own code to prolong training beyond the set limits when the goal is simply improved performance and no other constraints. What's also interesting is that in the future, as AIs become more capable, they might perform actions we didn't anticipate or realize we had given them access to. And luckily for now, human feedback is still effective because we can easily distinguish between what is correct and what is not. In the future though, AI systems might become so advanced that we cannot tell whether they're providing genuine insights or just yapping plausible sounding nonsense. Especially in text-based human feedback where there is often no perfect answer, it'll become increasingly difficult to differentiate between sloppy reasoning and true understanding. And actually, a lot of the chatbot arenas like LMSYS already suffer from this issue where AI chatbots can produce responses that sound convincing but lack real understanding. As a result, people often judge these models based on superficial formatting rather than the quality of their reasoning or the accuracy of their outputs. As flesh machines, we are highly proficient at judging the book by its cover where we favor what looks good, even if it's full of slop or math that we don't have time or the means to verify. On the flip side though, since AI excels at understanding large volumes of data and systematically generates tasks that would have otherwise been too tedious for humans to do, it could be very valuable for revisiting and exploring scientific studies that are known for being time consuming, which were then overlooked throughout history. In the future though, research groups might find themselves deciphering what AI proposes to determine its legitimacy instead of doing actual research themselves. And once AI becomes even more capable, it might just kick the humans out of the validation process to take over the entire pipeline of scientific discovery, with physical world validation becoming the next bottleneck for breakthroughs. Throughs. At that point, robots could be necessary to completely remove humans from the loop, but achieving that progress might be even more difficult as us humans are just too versatile in the physical world, and building a robot like that is probably really hard. However, as foundational models propose ideas that challenge human comprehension and evaluation, human researchers might eventually be sidelined in the process of scientific discovery in favor of robots doing repeated physical experiments.
experiment. So the idea of moving up the food chain mentioned in the paper does depend on the individual perspective, and I would imagine doomers fear exactly this. And in my honest, humble opinion, if the singularity does happen, augmented humans could stay on top for a while, but not forever, as the human brain would likely be the weakest link in the chain, because after all, human brain evolution took like 10 million years, and AI developments only took like 50 years to get here. The younger generation might not mind this shift of capability towards AI, as it would give them more time for leisure, while the older generation might fear it as it fundamentally challenges their identity and their worldview. They might feel displeased about being displaced from the top of the food chain, but the baby humans wouldn't care as they are biologically wired to adapt to any situation they are born in. So yeah, in a plausible future, all scientific advancements could be idealized, planned, executed, reviewed, and created by AI, leading to AI-automated research corporations. Top companies might achieve infinite scientific breakthroughs with hardware and compute power being the key differentiators between them. So while the rich get richer, our existential dreads right now might be akin to watching a Chris Kazat video on how the earth will eventually be swallowed by an exploding sun. And thank you for watching. So if you want to stay on top of the food chain and be the ultimate alpha, you gotta check out my newsletter. This way, you will be granted forever long machine learning knowledge piece by piece on a weekly basis, as I would be breaking down the latest hottest research papers coming out left and right for you. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Mariz, Miguelim, Deegan, Fifal, Robert Zaviasa, Owen Ingram, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.